And now, Canada is everything proudly presents Encyclopedia Round, the case of the mysterious hen prince. Will they be able to figure it out? Andrews doers. Let's start with the case of the blonde wig, shall we? <laughs> there was more Tidyville than met the eye. <laughs> there to passing motorists, Idabel love life and <laughs> ordinary seaside town. It had lovely beaches, a little league, and two delicate essence. It had churches, a synagogue, and four banks. To a police chief, it's all over the country. However, Idabel was far from ordinary. No one had got away from breaking a law in Idabel. How did Idabel do it? Hey, what was the secret behind the town's spotless? This police record, only two grown-ups, Mr. and Mrs. Brown, knew the answer. Out of his war on crime, was masterminded by their only child. Ten, only child, ten-year-old encyclopedia. Uh, America's shirt like Holmes and sneakers. Mr. Brown was the Idabel police chief. He was a fine officer, brave and smart. Like me! He was a... But sometimes he came up against a crime that even he could not solve. When that happened, he knew what to do. He drove home and the dinner table went over he went over the facts of the case while in exactly we had to listen carefully. Nothing else was necessary. Encyclopedia usually figured out the guilty person before dessert. Even if he needed a few minutes extra, his mother was disappointed. Poor Mrs. Brown. Chew Brown hated him. And keeping his son sleuthy undercover. He liked the president who he would have liked the president who declared her encyclopedia a national treasure. But if he could tell the truth, he would he who would believe him? Who would believe that ma the mastermind behind Attica Adavel's crackdown on crime? I'm did look at the mirror after washing to see if his face was clean. Ah. <laughs> if he could, he looked at his towel. As for encyclopedia, he never told anyone about the help he gave his father. They didn't want to seem different from all other fifth graders. He stuck. He was stuck with his nursery. However. Only his parents and teachers caught him by his real name, Leroy. Everyone else caught him in Encyclopedia. An Encyclopedia is a book, book or a set of books filled with facts from A to Z. So it was Encyclopedia's head. Head. And he he had read more books than ever, than, than anyone in Idaville. And he never forgot what he read. His pals decided that he was better than the library. He learned all kinds of things about books from him, such as footnotes don't come from squeaky shoes. At the dinner table Friday evening, 
Jerome poked at his meatloaf. Encyclopedia and his mother uh, knew what that meant. A case that I have had him puzzled. G. Brown. Brown, who put down his floor, there was tr there was trouble at the yacht club this morning. He said aloud, someone smashed the rudder, the rudder of the defiance. If you don't know what de defiance means, look it up. Up, and you're about to find out. Isn't de defiance one of the sailboats in the Commodore's Cup finals? Mrs. Brown inquired. Defiance is racing child. The second, replied Chief Brown. Whichever boat wins out of the two of three races will be awarded. Where did the Commodores come for the year? Yesterday. Yesterday, Defiance won the open opening race. Encyclopedia had read about the Commodore. There's cup titles in the item of news. Defiance was owned by Sal. By Mr. and Mrs. Ernest Day. Childhood, the second was owned by, on itself by John Cushing. And his brother Tar, childhood, and second was faster than Light Sea. Defiance was faster than Rousey. When Mr. Day had the house, Defiance was had slates for wingry ways. Right yesterday, to win by more than two minutes. Why don't you give the? Why don't you give Leroy the fact? I suppose the smash rudder, dear. Mister Rod suggested. I'll figure out who did it. Cheer Brown smiled and would do a, a small number from his breeze pocket. Here's what I have, he said. At seven o'clock that morning, the night man, the night watchman, and and the yacht club were went off duty. As he was leaving, a cleaning woman arrived. A few minutes later, it's a bit of a mess. The woman glanced out out uh, the window and saw a black blonde woman carrying a hammer. He was walking out, out on Pier 2 toward the slab where DFS was tied up. A light rain was falling. The, the cleaning woman didn't bother it about the man. Not more than 10 minutes passed when she happened to glance out the same window. The pier was deserted. The man was gone. Brown said, so far as I could tell, no one else was on the pier at 8 o'clock. Then five or six men and women arrived to, to take out their boats. That, that's when the smashed rudder on the fair defense was discovered. Andrew Storr's fun fact, the rudder gives the boat the power to steer to tell which way to go. Do you think the blonde man is responsible? Mrs. Brown asked. Mrs. Brown asked. Perhaps, she Brown answered cautiously. He flipped a page in his notebook. The manager of the Yacht Club telephoned Mr. Day, the owner of Diamonds. She Brown continued. After examining the rudder, her, her himself, Mr. Day called me. He said that the rudder couldn't be prepared in time for today's race, which was to start at noon. So the second race had had to be postponed until tomorrow. That was a tough break for the Cushing brothers, Encyclopedia said. The seas were calm today. Childhood. Childhood. Childhood, the second mic had a beaten die events.
and swear the series had one victory apiece. Why? True, Chief Brown said. But one of the brothers might have smashed the router, hoping that it could be not repaired at all. What a horrible example of, of the sportsmanship, Mrs. Brown said. I feel so sorry for the for the days. They're the one, the best liked couple at the yacht club. I questioned the Kashi brothers. Chief Brown said they don't have an alibi for seven o'clock the, when the blonde man was on the pier. If you know what alibi, alibi, alibi means, look it up. Because I don't know that word either. I can't remember. Anyway, hey. They insisted they were eating breakfast. They could be lying. They have alone and no one saw them at breakfast. What about Mr. and Mrs. Day? Asked Mrs. Brown. Mr. Day said he and his Mrs. Day were still sleeping at, at 7 o'clock. And Sir Chief Brown, like the Cushing Brothers, the Days live alone. And like the brothers, there is no one to support their story. Hey, Chief Brown lived through several pages in his notebook. Shortly before nine o'clock this morning, Mrs. Dr Mr. Day drove his wife to the beauty parlor. There is a supper dance at the at the yacht club tonight, and her as she wanted her hair set. Hey, hey, Mr. Day said that he just. Return home when he in the phone rang. It was the manager of the, the manager of the yacht club. I think, according to Mr. Day, that was when he learned about Diamond's smash rudder. Mrs. Brown looked at the encyclopedia out of the corner of her eye. He had not asked his question. Hmm. He had not, uh, usually he saw the toughest mystery with one question. If only the cleaning woman had recognized the man, she declared. She, she saw only his bat, she Brown said. Oh, I nearly forgot. I found a blonde wig at the top of the trash can outside the kitchen of the uh, club. The cleaning woman swears his wig wasn't there when she came to work. Kirk. Mrs. Brown looked at the encyclopedia around. She seemed to expect him to solve the case. Now he knew about the blonde wig. The encyclopedia closed his eyes. He always closed his eyes when he was deep as th he missed his thinking on a case. But he wasn't ready to yet ask his one question. So Mrs. Brown said, What color hair do John and Tom Cushing have and Mr. and Mrs. Day? The Cushing brothers had dark hair, she replied. Mr. Day, his hair is blonde. Mrs. Day is a redhead. <sniffs> Suddenly, not really a redhead, but a girl who had red hair on their head. Suddenly, it's like the PDO, but it's close. No, it is. He asked this question. Dad, did you chat with the beauty parlor to see how Mr. Day drove his wife there this morning, as he claims? He told the truth. Jim had stayed at home too. One of the Vienna editions say hand rock. Mrs. Day went to the door. Leroy! Mrs. Brown exclaimed. The writer of the day's sailing but was fetched around 7 o'clock. They reached the beauty parlor some two hours later. What? What ha has one got to do with the other? Everything, ma. Everything, Mom. I want to take Lapidia. Shall we find out? Oh. Mr. Day wanted the second race to be postponed. The Comancy favored the Cushing's boat. However, 
he didn't want her to commit a crime by damaging their boat, so he damaged his own. He wore a blonde wig and left it where it would be found, since he was a blonde. He thought that to cast suspicion on the dark hair's cushions, claimed that he first learned about the smashed rudder when the yacht club manager telephoned him after he had driven Mrs. Day for her to have her hair set. Therefore, as and Second Peter realized that he already knew the race would be postponed, Mrs. Day, who would never had her hair set, a few days of hers before Peter competed against Selva race, her new hairdo would have been blown apart in the wind. So, you know the answer? Good! Bye-bye, Andrew Stewart.